Hi, my name is Brooke Williams. I'm an associate professor of the practice of computational journalism here at Boston University. I'm excited to tell you about the Justice Media Collab that we launched thanks to Pitt UN. Uh, we're doing interdisciplinary data-driven investigative reporting, uh, collaboration with data sciences and journalism, um, using computational methods to do uh, projects for major news partners. Uh, this is truly a collaboration across the university. Um, I'm a faculty in the College of Communication in Journalism and uh, partnering with faculty of computing and data sciences at BU Spark. And then the BU Hub, we couldn't have done this without them. It's a cross college challenge, encouraging interdisciplinary work among faculty and students. Uh, we're made up of 30 students in the spring and the fall with six teams. We are able to uh, build a scaffolding and enabling graduate students and uh, others to get involved as paid project managers. Um, there's two professors, one from journalism, one from data sciences, and we have a growing number of news media partners. Um, we teach both in the spring and the fall as a course and then offer also a summer paid internship program. Um, our partners are expanding. We have local partners, we have uh, national partners, and uh, one example was a look into a potential disparities, racial disparities in arrests um, statewide here in Massachusetts. Let's go ahead and take a look. In a national reckoning over race and policing, we decided to take a closer look at who's being arrested in Massachusetts. What was your takeaway? I want a little bit more detail, I guess. Teaming up with students at Boston University, we analyzed new arrest data posted online as part of a criminal justice reform law. When I did this real effort, to look into this and to train officers start. We then took questions to leaders in law enforcement and experts on bias and policing. I, I wasn't surprised, but I was very disappointed. Rasan Hall with the ACLU reacting to our findings that show black people consistently arrested at disproportionately high rates compared to their share of the population. As you can see, students had a chance to really work with professional news partners on these projects. Another example was for CBS Boston, looking at COVID relief loans and whether uh, they were equitable uh, in distribution. Let's take a look at that. Sure that minority owned small businesses are getting their fair share of the paycheck protection loans. Good evening to you, I'm David Wade. And I'm Paula Evan, I'm partnering with students from Boston University's Justice Media Collab. Our investigation found many of these businesses were left behind when the PPP loan program first launched. WBZ Chief Investigator Cheryl Fiandaka shows us how one local advocacy group is stepping in to help out. We have learned a lot and uh, look forward to continuing to grow uh, and provide these computational investigative reports uh, to, to local media outlets and national media outlets. Um, some things that we are working on and are excited about, um, building trust with editors is, is a, a fun challenge. Um, and, and also, uh, students really want a chance to publish. So determining what stories are doable within the semester and which ones might need to go beyond the semester and then building a scaffolding so that they can extend beyond the semester, even with a, perhaps a paid internship or a paid position as a project manager. Um, and then embracing students from other disciplines and, the, and what they can bring to the table. We've had students from uh, education, from public health, uh, from music, um, and then professors also are acting as editors, which means we're, the, we're on call all the time. Uh, so it's, it's been a great fun and we look forward to growing the Justice Media Collab here at BU. Um, and thank you so much.